सब्सक्राइब टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल क्लिक द बेल आईकॉन फॉर अपडेट्स This is Strat News Global. I'm Amita Bravi on our weekly flagship show, Talking Point. Today we're discussing Xi Jinping and China with Jay Dutranade and Jennifer Zhang. We have uh, from India's capital, New Delhi. Jaydev Ranade has been on our platform many times. Evening, Mr. Ranade. Good evening. Pleasure to be here. And with from, all pleasure is all ours, sir. And uh, from New York, we have uh, again on our platform, Jennifer Zhang. Good morning, Jennifer, Hello. and thank you for making time for us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Pleasure is all ours. Uh, Mr. Ranade, getting straight into, you know, uh, with no signs of, uh, you know, the Russian war in Ukraine ending, you have written and you've seen signs of uh, what you think is disagreement in the top rungs of the CCP or the CPC? That's right, uh, Amitabh. In fact, uh, there are two things that I've been noticing. One is, uh, uh, shall I say, dissatisfaction with Xi Jinping's policy towards Russia and particularly Putin um, uh, getting accentuated. The second is... Uh, uh, an apprehension among the Chinese Communist Party members and cadres uh, that, uh, you know, sanctions are imminent uh, as, as far as they're concerned. And the third is disagreement in the upper echelons of the Chinese Communist Party on the policy that should be followed. And I think there are clear uh, indicators suggesting each of these and that Xi Jinping is taking measures to try and contain the spread of this dissatisfaction, or if we can call it discontent. Uh, Jennifer, um, the war in Ukraine, uh, just before that, February 24th, uh, um, before the Olympics uh, that Putin and uh, Xi Jinping met, the threat, as Mr. Ranade saying, of US sanctions. But what evidence do you see that, uh, say, Xi Jinping is losing or has lost his power? Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, you can see a lot of conflicting messages from the CCP's official uh, channel or media reports. Uh, in, the, in the early stage, I think uh, the, all the narrative in the Chinese media is very pro-Russia, it's very uh, supporting Russia and against Ukraine. But uh, recently, sometimes the narrative changes. They start to report uh, Ukraine on a positive, you know, from a positive angle, and they start to uh, once or twice call the invasion a invasion. You know, before that, they always call it, they follow the Russian narrative, like uh, call it an uh, operation or special military operation. They refuse to call it an uh, invasion, but the narrative changes. Uh, changes a little bit. And another very noticeable thing is recent, recently I've done two shows about this. There is a widespread uh, rumor about Xi Jinping has already virtually be forced to step down and Li Keqiang will be taken over. And one of the reasons why, you know, the, CC, the other CCP members is very unhappy about Xi Jinping is his Russian policy. Of course, another two is his um, uh, COVID zero COVID policy, as well as his uh, war, uh, war wolf diplomacy, which I, I think has put other CCP members in danger, especially after the US Congress passed an act recently, I think that's on April 27th, uh, called uh, Access Act, that is accessing she's uh, in, in interference and uh, uh, subversion act that is to access Xi Jinping's rule in, in his assisting Russia. So if he plays a role in it or the CCP plays a big role in it, I think the US would like to sanction the CCP uh, as well. So this will put the access the other CCP leaders. And I, I think all of the top CCP leaders has accumulated 
a large amount of uh, wells, and most of them have already been trans uh, transferred to overseas countries. So these were put the wealth of other CCP leaders in danger. So I think maybe that is also a, ver a very important reason why the other CCP officials have incentive uh, to do something against Xi Jinping. Interesting points you are um, ra raising there. But Mr. Rane, a crucial six months or so before the CPC Congress and what is expected to be a third term for Xi. But how do you see these reports that uh, the Prime Minister Li Keqiang is making a comeback of sorts? Well, um, yeah, these uh, next six months uh, are crucial for Xi Jinping. Uh, the uh, Party Congress is uh, due in November. Uh, that's what people are saying. Uh, fairly reliable reports. Uh, but uh, I uh, would put a question mark on uh, the phrase that Li Keqiang, Li Keqiang is staging a comeback. Um, he has always been there as Premier. Uh, I think he's getting maybe a higher profile because the economy has taken a sharp and sudden downturn. Uh, the, uh, uh, it is affecting the lives of ordinary people. Uh, and uh, jobs are at a premium. The, the unemployment is very high. Um, uh, nearly 14% um, uh, graduate unemployment. So you can imagine the uh, pain that is being felt. And uh, in order to deflect the criticism that he would be getting, um, Li Keqiang is being given more of a role in public as far as the media is concerned. But the uh, key uh, organizations like the Central Finance uh, and Stability Commission, etc., continue to be headed by Xi Jinping. His uh, uh, one of his closest associates, Vice Premier Liu He, continues to be the chief economic uh, uh, czar, if I may say. So um, you know they continue to be involved in crafting policy, uh, which uh, Li Keqiang is not. But the final point is that Li Keqiang himself is not uh, in the run for continuing as Premier at the next party congress, he's going to step down. The new man will have to come. So I think uh, it's it's more a question of uh, Xi Jinping uh, sort of trying to deflect criticism against himself, of which there is quite a lot. Uh, may I just also uh, refer to a point that uh, Jennifer made just now about uh, people having moved their money out? Yes, uh, certainly. Um, I think uh, the, a large number of Chinese leaders have amassed a lot of wealth. The way they live uh, is certainly well beyond the means um, which they would have available to them. But they've also moved this money out probably to uh, democracies or countries which are more stable. And uh, those assets are at risk. But that's a double-edged weapon because while they have moved it out, uh, uh, it also means that Xi Jinping has the levers now to uh, ensure that they behave themselves and uh, stay within party lines. Otherwise, he can, um, you know, uh, start prosecuting them. He has already warned, in fact, on the 5th of May, that more corruption cases will follow. And that was at a Politburo Standing Committee meeting. So it's going to be serious if it comes. And uh, I think more important than just the leaders, uh, having amassed wealth is the fact that uh, almost or nearly, uh, shall I say, over 70% of the department head level uh, uh, members or cadres in the Chinese Communist Party, their children are studying abroad in the US and the West. And obviously for funding their studies, a lot of money has been set aside uh, in the US and the West. And if the sanctions do come, uh, then they will all be affected. They'll have to come back much like the Hong Kong chief executive Carrie Lam's son had to cut short his PhD studies and return to Hong Kong when she was sanctioned. So that is a threat. And if that comes about, it will be nearly 300 million Chinese Communist Party members who will be directly impacted. That translates into a lot of negativity at the Party Congress, which Xi Jinping certainly can ill afford. Sure. Uh, Jennifer, um, there's a question that uh, one of our viewers, Matara, asked. How much CCP blood will be spilled if there is going to be a coup against Xi Jinping? Is this wishful thinking? I think it, probably it is. 
But the fact that such a rumor is so widespread, at least to reflect, I think, the inter、uh, internal power struggle of the CCP. I do believe there is a faction or factions in. Within the CCP, that is purposely leaking this kind of you can call it rumor or wishful thinking to the overseas,、uh, you know, platforms for them to be imported back into China to try to influence the politics in China. So I think we. We've already seen the effect of, of that, and especially I noticed that someone has edited a video clip of, you know, Chinese Vice President Wang Qishan's、uh, meeting when he went to South Korea to attend the inauguration ceremony of the new、uh, South Korea president. They actually edited his mentioning of Xi Jinping from that video clip, and then gave. Give people an impression that Wang Qishan didn't mention Xi Jinping's name or title at all in order to show disrespect to Xi Jinping to use it as evidence that she is been, you know,、uh, has been ousted. So this all this kind of phenomena, if you observe it, you can I、uh, think obviously see there is some kind of discontent or movements or or some kind of people are trying to in to create this impression that she is、uh, pushed you know pushed back very hardly and there could be a coup happening inside China. At least I think a lot of people. Wishing that is happening because they say they they say no no、uh, you know good end if she continues to rush in on like this. Mr. Nane, if you you want to、um, add to that, and、uh, you were talking earlier about the economic downturn, the headwinds, a turnaround that is、uh, required. So will there be fall guys? Will there be? You mentioned you know the prime minister being put up there. Uh, possibly for、uh, reorientation of、uh, economic policy.、Uh, yes, I mean、um, I, I、uh, agree with、uh, Jennifer that、uh, there is、uh, discontent、uh, within the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, I would say that there is、uh, widespread discontent in the Chinese Communist Party、uh, for various reasons. One is many of the members who have been、uh, there for a long time,、uh, people who have survived the Cultural Revolution. Um, uh, you know, they they or seen Mao's days.、Uh, they do not want to return to, as they say, the one-man rule of Mao, and、um, they don't want the manner in which、uh, Xi Jinping is functioning. That means concentrating power in himself,、uh, ignoring the age limits that were laid down for elevation of cadres to Politburo and、uh, Politburo Standing Committees. So that is one category. The second are the ones who are affected by the downturn in the economy. The third. As I mentioned, are these large numbers of、uh, Chinese Communist Party members whose kids are studying in the、U、United States and West, and that's you know these are factors that one shouldn't ignore. They're pretty big factors, and when we talk about、uh, Xi Jinping being sidelined, I think the entire question boils down to whether their numbers are large enough, whether the opposition has reached a critical mass. If so, then Xi Jinping,、uh, Xi Jinping will、uh, go. Uh, the veterans will probably step in, and they'll sell the message to him that look, it's a question of the party or you. In which case, you better go. But、uh, it's all a question of whether they reach that critical mass.、Um, but I've also been hearing that even if he makes it, the problems are becoming so acute that even after he resumes or begins his third term, he will still find it very, very difficult, and he may go shortly thereafter. Wow. Uh, there's a question for you from Australia, Jennifer Salvatore Babones. Thanks for that Australian ten、uh, dollar question.、Uh, the the point that you were making about、um, top Chinese leaders and their children studying abroad. He asks, in light of China's efforts to eliminate foreign influence in the country, why does China continue to allow its young people to study at foreign universities? I think that is going to change or has already changed. I uh, actually uh, very recently I think that is May 
12 or 10, I forgot which. The immigration department inside the Public Security Bureau has already issued a notice to uh, limit people's unnecessary move to going abroad. Of course, they don't uh, give any de definition of what is unnecessary you know, move to going uh, abroad. You can define it as you know, traveling or visiting families. Uh, but there are very uh, many uh, recent reports about people's passports got destroyed. Uh, someone even said uh, he, his mother's green card of the United States got destroyed when they tried to uh, exit China. And now it's becoming more and more difficult for people to leave China. Many people got their passport destroyed and their custom. And the, the officers will check the record of on your phone, if they find any anti-communist party, uh, you know, a statement on your social media platforms or in your chat groups, you state anything against uh, China or the Chinese Communist Party, they would not allow you to go out. And I think the reason they use is uh, is the pandemic. They say because right now the uh, a COVID situation is out of control every day in overseas countries, and we are doing great. If you go to overseas, you bring back the virus, uh, it will damage our safety here. That's, of course, the excuse they use. But, you know, if you look at the overall situation in China, like I did a, a program before, they are now establ establishing a so-called unified, uh, you know, purchasing and marketing platform in China, which were very much looks like they are going back to the old days in Mao's time of the planned economy. The, the government is entitled to purchase everything and to sell everything, and they are move, move more from a free market toward a planned market. So all these signs uh, think, uh, indicate that the CCP is trying to I think close its gate uh, between you know China and other countries more and more. So many Chinese overseas Chinese people are saying the window for anyone who wants to leave China is very very narrow. If you want to leave, leave now. Otherwise, you may lose your opportunity forever. And right now, it's already very difficult for people to leave China. Right. Um... Mr. Rande, a question for you, an interesting one. How does a country like India spy on a country like China? What is the methodology used? <laughs> um, uh, before that, I'd just like to add a little bit to what absolutely. Jennifer said about, uh, uh, you know, the uh, about the students. Um, she's absolutely correct that they've started uh, closing in um, or closing down, um, shall I say, to use a Chinese phrase, outward passages. Uh, but... Um, uh, they, are, they are also interested at the same time in sending their students, um, uh, maybe you can call them handpicked students or uh, politically reliable students, out to uh, the US and the West to study, uh, particularly in STEM subjects, because that is an area where they're desperate to get people. And uh, China has already, um, uh, shall I say, revived or is now pushing with greater vigor their program of attracting talent back there and they're giving huge uh, subsidies of between five to ten million dollars for housing and things like that to try and get um, science talent back in China. The, uh, the other factor is of course um, over the last year plus, in fact I would say two and a half years, almost every day there is a reference in the Chinese media to color revolutions and the threat that they pose to China. So uh, they're really preparing the ground for uh, a period of isolation uh, if they have to go go that route. Um, I don't think they want to really close off because that will affect trade. Uh, but uh, they're obviously preparing for some kind of a system whereby they can uh, close off political influence while uh, continuing with trade. As far as the question itself is concerned, all I'll say that various methods are used Obviously, this is not the forum where we can discuss it, but all kinds of uh, methods are used, uh, just as everyone else does and as others are using here uh, in India. 
Uh, since Ms. Shandia was talking about COVID and we were showing some of your tweets, uh, Jennifer, on the situation in Shanghai and other, other places, even Beijing for that matter. It's a question from one to four, just madness. India also had a strict lockdown during COVID in the beginning and uh, uh, again during the other waves. China also had a strict lockdown, but where do you think it went wrong for them? And why is it continuing? I think the the most the where it went wrong is that now uh, because initially uh, the china the chinese communist party cover up the case and cover up the se severity of the problem in china so if you look at the official numbers china up to now they only had some 4000 death cases but you know the number from all other countries is, is are so terribly huge according to chinese standard so uh, controlling to be able to successfully controlling the virus has already become the, one of the biggest political achievement for Xi Jinping himself and of course also for the CCP. So because of this zero COVID policy has already become a political legacy for CCP. So that cannot be challenged. So that's why uh, uh, when the Omicron comes, they still think they need to stick to this zero COVID policy. Uh, so for, for, uh, for whatever price they have to pay it. And also they are very good at controlling people and they feel good uh, because of they can come, have the excuse to control people. So they, I think for any tyranny kind of regime uh, to to create fear uh, so that they have this uh, excuse to control people, to, to take more control over people's, not only their personal freedom, but also their, their property properties. Like you say, you are saying now people are breaking into people's house and uh, destroying their properties and belongings and to, 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 to do so-called disinfection. So this kind of COVID control model has one already become a political uh, struggle or political campaign or should of their political power. So because it's already connected to their political achievement and to their political uh, legitimacy, so that cannot be changed. That's why they say we need to stick to this policy no matter what at all cost. So ordinary people have unfortunately become, became, become the cost that ha have to be paid during this COVID, this ridiculous, you know, COVID control campaign. Right. Uh, Mr. Rane, Xi Jinping announcing this global security initiative and the subsequently top leaders, including Wang Yi, elaborated on that. Oh, what do you read off uh, that? I mean, it's completely hypocritical when it says it's... Uh, uh, but do you, do you agree with some analysts who say that some countries uh, would find some resonance in this? Well, it depends on how gullible you are, uh, to be very honest. <laughs> if you just go back to what uh, the Russians did um, in 20, I think 14 it was when they, or 2017, when they first came out with this phrase of uh, uh, indivisible security. That is a term that they used. And then uh, in the uh, February 4 joint statement, Again, you find it explained where they talk about, um, uh, um, you know, uh, taking steps to prevent uh, undermining of security and stability of the common surrounding areas um, uh, of these two countries, which means uh, Russia and China. Um, in other words, they have the they have given themselves the uh, right to step in and sort out what they uh, expect or what they imagine or assess as the problems in the neighboring areas, uh, which is what uh, Putin's justification, one of his justifications was for going into uh, Ukraine. And uh, let me remind you that uh, Wang Yi used that even when in April 2020, when the Chinese forces began coming in here. In fact, it was just around the time of Galwan when he made that comment. Now, uh, the same thing, um, uh, they have uh, repackaged it because they probably felt that it was not um, uh, selling too well. Uh, uh, forgetting the fact that they had elucidated this in the joint statement and they have called it the global security initiative uh, a phrase that uh, Xi Jinping used when he was addressing the Poao Asian Forum uh, 
uh, and uh, he uh, sort of put it out as if uh, you know it would be security of the Asians for the Asians, uh, keeping the other powers out. Um, that is the packaging that he gave. But uh, if you look at it a bit closely, as I said, they first spoke about indivisible security, which they haven't jettisoned. And secondly, um, uh, in Asia, China is um, uh, probably the biggest power. I say probably because they haven't yet proved it as far as India is concerned, and they haven't proved it as far as Japan is concerned. But uh, otherwise, they are the biggest power. And um, uh, what they imply is that, uh, you know, they will be the uh, uh, security brokers here in this region if they can manage that. But it's just, um, I think, an attempt to try and justify this indivisible security. I personally uh, would not give too much uh, credence to this. Uh, it's like the other organizations that they floated, um, which haven't really uh, got any, uh, uh, you know, traction. Jennifer, I mean, your thoughts on the, the GSI? I mean, the Chinese are worried about Quad and AUKUS. Sorry, could you repeat? I the, 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 the Global Security Initiative wanted your thoughts on that in, in, in light of AUKUS and Quad. Uh, I think it is, it is a good move that more people are realizing the danger the, the Chinese Communist Party is imposing on the global safety. And it is good that more China are, or more countries are working together to address this issue. Of course, they, this is a, a great setback uh, to the CCP. They, they, before that, they've been expanding their power, their, their harassment, their military threat to their neighboring countries and including India. And now I think it is very good uh, of, uh, that more countries are joined force to push back. And of course, this will be seen as the CCP and as a great threat. Uh, to to its uh, global power, and I think uh, it is it wants to push back. And uh, why it's it's tightening control inside China? I think it could be preparing for some kind of move to either take over Taiwan or to do something in the South China Sea area. Uh, that as a you know desperate struggle to maintain its power. Sometimes you, when you have two great uh, problems internally, you create an external uh, war or trouble or whatever conflicts uh, outside of the country. So you have a greater excuse to control in China to, to hold up the nationalism banner again to, to try to stay in power and to hold its power together. Uh, Mr. Rande, it's been over two years now since the standoff uh, with China began last May in uh, Ladakh. Uh, still no complete resolution on that front. We saw Wang Yi come in here. Uh, subsequent statements from the Chinese tried to make it seem as if India and China were on the same side uh, of the coin. With the EAM, the External Affairs Minister has made that uh, point clear. How do you see uh, those re relations or bad relations developing? Well, I'm afraid I'm not pessimistic. I don't expect anything uh, to come out of the uh, border commander's talks. Uh, the talks will go on. Um, I think both sides are doing it for their own purposes. The Chinese to show that they're willing to talk. Uh, we uh, to show that, you know, uh, maybe a solution is possible. But I don't think either side believes that. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, picking up on what Jennifer just said, um, that... Uh, uh, in this period, which is, I would say that where Xi Jinping is shaky, where he is confronted with so many problems, um, if he feels that it is necessary to create an external diversion, then of course, he will look for something to do. Um, the easiest will be to pull off something in the South China Sea, but I don't know whether that will get that much attention inside China. Uh, because they have already been claiming that they, by and large, have uh, fair jurisdiction on it. Uh, as far as um, Taiwan is concerned, a lot depends on how the Chinese assess that the U.S. will react. And they're not yet uh, certain uh, if there is a chance that the U.S. will step in, 
then I think uh, China will think not once, not twice, but many times before doing it. But therefore, I feel that as far as we are concerned, the uh, um, we have to be much more alert on our borders till the party congress is concluded, because this is the period where there is a lot of uncertainty in China. For people who are studying uh, China's internal politics, it is quite clear that things are not stable, as the Chinese like to use that term. They're not stable, and Xi Jinping um, is not that solidly entrenched as he would like to be. I'm not saying he won't come back, but he is um, uh, in a shaky position. Uh, Jennifer, as far as uh, India and China go, your thoughts and how worried is the CCP Xi Jinping on uh, closer India-US relations? Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. If um, Xi Jinping think it's possible, uh, it's necessary to create anything, he would. Like I think they they Mao already did in 1916s to create a conflict uh, in the border to India. I think to create a vis victor victory for it. Uh, so you just look at how the Chinese Communist Party is treating its own citizens, you know how it were going to treat its neighbors. I know, uh, I, I noticed in the Chinese narrative about India, uh, either its official one or the, you know, netizens speeches on the internet, when they refer to India or Indian people, they use very disrespectful languages. I don't know how to translate it into, into English, like Indu Um, It's very uh, disrespectful, downgrading referral to, to a nation, to, to a people. So, so for, for many of this war, war of Chinese, you know, you, you can say the fans of the, China, the CCP, they like to create an enemy that they can easily deal with to, to create a great, good image to itself. As to Taiwan, I think if Xi Jinping gets a third turn, he may probably, uh, I think it's always the dream for the generations after generations of the CCP leaders to take back Taiwan, as they said, they always claim Taiwan is part of China. So to create a everlasting political legacy. So the, multi, the motivation is, is very huge and they are doing a lot of preparation in, in, in China, we can see that. Uh, but I also agree if they feel that the US is very determined to defend Taiwan, uh, to get involved in defending Taiwan. And also, I think because now Japan uh, is already showing very firm determination to defend Taiwan. If the CCP invades Taiwan, they will think uh, hard about whether they want to do it or not. But uh, I think the international world need to show to the CCP a very clear message, uh, don't mess with Taiwan. If you do, we are not going to let, let you go easily. I think that will uh, give them uh, enough uh, food to think about it, whether they want to do it or not. But we do need to uh, be on, on our alert so that, you know, we don't be, uh, be caught off guard. Jennifer Zeng, absolutely appreciate you giving us uh, time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And Mr. Ranaya, as usual, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, it was a pleasure being on the show with you and with Jennifer. Uh, I think it is an interesting program. Thank Thanks you. to both of you. And just a reminder to our viewers, thank you for engaging with both our guests uh, today. If you'd like to uh, support us, we're just going to put up a UPI payment ID, uh, which gives us 100% of what you uh, contribute. It's the link is also available in uh, the YouTube descriptor and the various modes of uh, um, payment that you can use. And as soon as this stream ends as well, YouTube has a, a new functionality. You can use that to help support us as well. Just click and buy a YouTube super thanks. That's the heart icon that will appear right next to the thumbs up that you have given for this video.
You're watching Talking Point on Strat News Global. I'm Amit Abreli. Hello. Many of you must be wondering what happened to the new program that I was supposed to do every Saturday called Ask Nitin. Well, it's delayed a bit, mainly for two reasons. One, of course, that I have been slightly unwell with a very bad back, uh, lower back pain uh, for a couple of weeks, uh, unable to sit up for too long. And secondly, uh, the participation that we were expecting uh, from many of you uh, to uh, be uh, online and on the screen while uh, I discussed uh, various issues of interest to all of us in foreign policy and defense. Uh, the participation in terms of written questions has been excellent, but uh, many of you have shown reluctance to come on the screen. And therefore, the format that we had initially thought that we would have an exchange of views on the screen live uh, is not working out at the moment. But if you think you still can participate online and on the screen with me, then uh, we will launch this program as soon as I get fully fit and I get more participation and more participants willing to come on video and online during a live or a recorded program. Until then, Ask Nitin will take some time to come back on the screen. Stay fit, stay safe. I'll see you soon on the other side.